and welcome to the Sad Dads Club podcast. Here's everybody's favorite sad dads, Jim and Boo. Trying to solve a tech program <laughs> right. on a podcast. Uh, hey everybody, welcome to the show, Sad Dads Club podcast, episode 211. There are no wives here. No. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode. Yeah, I, I like I enjoyed that. We should maybe have them on again in the four four years. Yeah, <laughs> come on back. <laughs> four more years. No, it's fine. I I enjoyed that. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of sad dads, man, I had a rough. I had a rough thing happen last week. Okay. Uh, so I told I think I mentioned that we were going to a punk rock show. Oh yes. Right. Part of that punk rock show was, uh, the reason why I was going to go to this show was there was a band playing called Verbal Assault. I mean, it's, they sound terrible, right? And yeah. that name is just doesn't sound good. Okay. They're a lot better than their name sounds, but regardless of that. Okay. Um, the first thing I did, knowing who they were, um, I sent a message to my friend, Scott. Hey, man, you're the only person I know that would give a shit that Verbal Assault was <clears throat> right, right, right. coming to town. Uh, this is a high school buddy or post high school high school friend. Okay, yeah, somebody. So I, this is a long somebody I've known friend. for a really long okay. time. Gotcha. Mm, crickets. And then I realized also, um, well, the thing of it was is the show. I, this was Wednesday, last Wednesday. The show was Friday, so like two days later. Right. Now, I mean, if he couldn't make it, fine, but didn't hear from him. Okay. Period. And I realized the last message I sent to him, no reply. And I'm like, so my wife and I went to the show. I kept an eye out for him in case he showed up. Right. Didn't see him. Because it still might have been his bag, just not it certainly, with you. It certainly was his bag. That okay. was one of, the, one of the bands that we listened to. And him and I both, we had this conversation on numerous, of, numerous occasions and even recently uh, that this band, this particular band, was very underrated uh, punk band. Like they didn't get their just desserts. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, in our opinion, they were far better than their name would imply, and far better than I think the community treated them. And... Or what? Yeah. Right. I got gotcha. you. Um. So, so he wasn't he wasn't at the show. So then, like Saturday, I was like talking to him. I'm like, uh, did I? Man, Scott didn't I, reply. Did I get ghosted? The, yeah, is he pissed at me, or is he just being an asshole, or what's going on? Like, right. Uh, I don't know. And I'm, I have kind of a thing where, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't reach out to people because I don't think people actually want to talk to me. Okay. No. Oh. So I, it's a, it's a long standing thing where I just don't because I have this underlying thing where I just don't think that they want to talk to me. Right. They're not talking to me. If I reach out to them, and my bu now I'm bugging them. Right. I, so it's a thing. Right. So <clears throat> I uh, then comes along Monday, and and I'm like, what is happening? So it kind of got to put a bug in my mind. So I went on Facebook and uh, went to his Facebook page. Or no, first I went to Messenger when I went through... Mes Facebook Messenger. Yeah. Okay. Went through Messenger and like we had exchanged a bunch of stuff on there. And I thought, oh shit, maybe I should have messaged him on Messenger instead of like in a text. Maybe that's where he right. would have replied. Gotcha. And then I went to his Facebook page and a couple of things caught my eye. A tons of posts that were like, it's your birthday, missing you, you know... The, a bunch of those. Oh, on his on his wall. Wall, on his Facebook. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. So people were posting to him. Okay. And then I see posts from somebody that says like, "Your son turned a t he's a teenager today. I wish you were here." And I'm like, "What the fuck?" Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck is going on? Um, and then there was another one like, "Your son is going to his first prom oh. thing and i'm like what is happening and then i did a google search for his name obituary oh. and found an obituary here in soccer two of them actually so he still lived local yeah so he <clears throat> in high school time he 
I think it was my junior after the summer after my junior year, he moved to Massachusetts with oh, his wow. parents. Okay. And it was a big deal. Like mm-hmm. all of our close, like several of our close friends, he had a cabin up in South South Lake. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know where the Safeway is in South Shore? Yes. Uh, not the big new one, but the old one. Yes. Okay. He he had a cabin kind of back behind there. Wow. And uh, r- I mean, right in the thick of it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so we, on his last weekend, everybody went to the cabin for the whole weekend and hung out and like went to parties and I mean, uh, we did all kinds of shit and like the last night, like almost slept at the lake on the beach there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, all of us were skate kids, punk rock kids. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so he moved and, uh, we kept in touch here and there. He was also friends with my, br- my older brother. Mm-hmm. Um, um, music was a big part of his life. He played guitar. He was in several bands. Hmm. And, uh, so then, uh, he was in the Boston area for a while. And then I think after graduating and working a little bit, and I don't know, he went to college, I think a little bit there. Um, he moved to Florida and he had gotten married and hmm. had a kid. And then at one point I get a message from him like, Hey, I'm, I'm moving back to SAC. And I'm like, oh, cool, you know. So he came back, and then we hung out a few times, like went to a couple shows, went to dinner, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. Roughly, what was that timeline? Well, from now, like uh, that was a five. few. That was several years ago. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't. So pre-COVID. Oh, absolutely. Safe to say. Yeah, okay. it was at least four or five years ago. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> so he he was around. Um, and then, you know, we, we chat, we mostly talked through messenger Mm -hmm. and some texting here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, he was kind of mis didn't really talk much about himself. Like I just knew he had a son and then he was married Mm -hmm. and that's, I mean, he didn't really say, I never went to his house. He never came over to my house. It's funny. Cause like. You're a no pry guy, and it sounds like he's a no pry guy, and so you have these two, these two personalities. They're just like, hey, yeah, I I would talk if you would talk, and I'm gonna talk if you would talk, and you guys have like so much in common and so much to say. Yeah, um, so you know, uh, and I, the the thing of it is, is like his obituary said he passed away last October on the twentieth. So we're talking like almost. Not like, quite a year ago. Yeah, just short. And I'm just finding out Monday. So right. it kind of hit me real hard. So one of our mutual friends who Scott was closer to than I, he, than I was mm-hmm. uh, because he went to like grade school and junior high with him is my understanding. And he's known that family forever. I reached out to him like, hey, Eric, what's going on with Scott Vingers? Well, first of all, before I found out about the obituary, I had sent him a message Hey man, what's going on with Scott Bingers? Like he's kind of ghosted me from texts and haven't heard from him in a while. Just wondering if you knew what's up. Mm. And I didn't get a reply. And then I found the obituary and I went, fuck, uh, just found an obituary. What the fuck happened? Like, I don't understand. Right. And it was maybe two hours went by and I saw that he had read it because on messenger, you can tell whether people read it or not. And no reply for a while. And then finally, I just get a message with his phone number that says, call me. Oh, okay. And I spent an hour plus on the phone with him on Monday morning. And he told me the whole story. And it's fucking sad as shit. It is the saddest thing. And especially considering he has a son. um, Essentially, he drank himself to this. This is a second friend of mine named Scott who has drank themselves to death. Mm. Um, so he had a, apparently a little bit of a tumultuous relationship with his wife. Were they ex? At the time they were just separated as far as I know. I don't Mm. think they were divorced. Mm -hmm. Um, but she apparently was into meth. And so he had left a couple times and gone back. And apparently when things were going really well at home, uh, according to Eric, like, he could kind of keep his demons down. And I didn't really realize that he had that kind of an issue 
Um, I didn't know he had an alcohol problem or a drug issue at all. Mm. I, I didn't know that part of him. Um, hmm. I mean, a lot happened since junior year of high school. Right. Yeah. And it's not, I didn't spend a lot of time with him, um, post him leaving. Mm-hmm. So, you know, see him here and there and that kind of stuff. But, uh, so it's just sad. Um, he was living in an apartment down, you know, where, um, uh, you know where Felipe's is on Auburn Boulevard? Not off the top of my head, no. Um, trying to think but of the one. name is familiar, but I couldn't get you a. Yeah, there's a place down there called uh, Crepes and Burgers. Okay. He lived like just down the street to the left in an apartment in there. Okay. And he was living in there, and I guess he wasn't working, so his mom was shelling him cash to like mm-hmm. live, and he was taking care of his son because his wife had. Well, if she had problems, I can imagine. Yeah, his wife was meth thing, and um, so it was really bad situation. He just drank, and then the guy I was talking to, Eric, our mutual friend, he's a Sack Fire Metro uh, guy. Oh, okay. Happens to be stationed oh, no. at the local fire station to Scott's apartment. Uh the 911 call comes in, and I don't know who made the 9... I think it was Scott made the 911 call. Like, he knew something was going on. But also, one of the things about Scott is he had a propensity to have seizures, and especially when he drank. Okay. And he was drinking a lot. So, 911 calls in. Eric didn't even know... He knew he lived in that complex, but he didn't know what apartment. Right, right, right. And Scott had ghosted him, too, and they were really close. Like... Eric was telling me they used to do like weekly get togethers at his parents' house, at his mom's house Mm -hmm. and a bunch of, and then he said that's just sort of tapered off over time until like Scott just wouldn't reply to him. Okay. Um, so 911 calls in, they, they come to this apartment number, they knock on the door, Scott opens the door and Eric's like, Scott. And Scott didn't even recognize Eric. Oh. It took him a minute or so to even realize who it was. He's like, hey, man, it's Eric. Mm-hmm. And uh, so finally when he figured out who it was, he's like, oh, I'm going to have a seizure. He knew it was coming. Right. And so the uh, Eric knew him well enough that he took the son into the bedroom to pack a bag. He's like, he's coming with me. Okay. And... So that way he didn't have to watch his dad get gurneyed up and taken away to the hospital. Right. And this is COVID time too, so the hospital won't let visitors in anyway. Right. It's it's I'm I'm realizing now that we're a year back. A year so, ago. Okay. Yeah, I gotcha. And uh so he ends up taking the son and taking care of him and like getting him to school and you know, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff while Scott goes into the hospital. He ends up having a having a seizure. To the point to where he codes, but they bring him back and he's on life support. Oh, uh, okay. And he and according to Eric, I don't know how I don't understand how this I don't know much about this medically uh, mm-hmm. speaking, but uh, he um was on life support and if he would have survived, it would have been likely he would have been vegetable quadriplegic or oh, something like that. Okay. And uh, by this time, his mom had come into town because she lives wherever she lives, back east. Mm -hmm. And um, no one can go visit him. Now, Eric is a fire chief, so he can have on his uniform and they'll let him in. Okay. So he would go visit him. Um, So he was there for at least for a span of days? He was there for quite a while. Um, I, he went in on like the 7th and died on the 20th. Okay, so, okay. So, so he was in the hospital for a while, and I think he was cohesive at some point, but had a seizure at some point and coded, and I don't know. It was just really ugly. Okay. Um, and then they ended up taking him off life support because they're like, he just, he, he, there's no way he would want to live right. like that. Right. So I'm like, dude, I just can't believe what I'm hearing. And also, like, I'm really sorry you have to relive that and tell me what happened because that's terrible. Right. Um, uh, it's where terrible. Did the, where did the son? 
with the grandma? Or so is he the still son a- is living. I and I my understanding is that the aunt, the wife's aunt, who lives in Vermont, adopted him. Okay. So the son has moved to Vermont and is living there. That's who was posting. Your son is a mm. teenager today, mm. kind of mm. thing. But it, I mean, it's just like I'm. I'm really having a hard time wrapping my mind around that. You know, um, w- which part? Like the um... the fact that it happened a year ago. That's oh, okay. one. That's one part. Right. The fact that it's someone who I would have considered to be, even though we didn't talk that much, we were pretty close. Mm-hmm. Um. That's tough. Yeah. It's a piece of you has gone. Right. You know? Yeah. So that's, man, struggling with it a little bit. The, uh, yeah, and not now just hearing the story from you. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of my, my first responses to you were, were pretty much stuff that we, we've said here on the show. Yeah. It, It was, uh, you hate to see people think, uh, that, that one, that no one cares for them or that they're unimportant. Right. And two, that, uh, they, they might be embarrassed or don't know where to go to, to look for help. Or to just talk to someone. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be about help, right? Because cause sometimes yeah. just talking about it may may shine a light on an opportunity uh, that you didn't know that was there while you're in the worst place unimaginable, you know? Yeah, I mean, part of it is... Like there were so many aspects of his life that I didn't know about, right? That that, that he kept kept to himself. Mm-hmm. So I would have never known a a, a a side of like having been around him more more and more, right? Uh, I wouldn't have never kn- I wouldn't have known that he had any issues, right? Um, and you know you don't get a real you don't get any. You don't really get any feel of how someone's really doing or what's going on with their life when you like shoot each other two sentence or one sentence right. text messages oh, here yeah, and there. Absolutely. You know? Um so, you know, and part part of it for me is that whole like standoffish approach right. that I tend to have. Um we have in a in a similar but not nearly as serious of a vein, the um Really good friend of mine going up through uh, Clear Creek and Bear River, the guy that lives in Katie's house, mm-hmm. Jesse. Um, his family um, always treated me like se- second son, mm-hmm. a surrogate, and well right. before issues with my mom came into play. And every one of us in the valley, it was uh, like all the families, all the boys were all surrogate sons to the other families. And uh, after high school, like, our friend group kind of went separate ways. Uh, he did, he went and, you know, uh, Cal Poly got higher education, and then uh, his dad was Mike Ziegler, who ran Pride Industries here in the area. Yeah. Um, his wife, Debbie, uh, man, like, for my sister, she was a, a surrogate mom when my mom, when that happened, when my mom stepped out off the radar kind of thing. So uh, my sister has a unique tie to that family, and I had a super strong tie with Jesse and his dad for the longest time. Um, and his dad passed away pre COVID. I want to say, um, and that one, it it hit like a ton of bricks. And I can't imagine if I'd have done, because we went our separate ways after high school, the the friend group went separate ways. Um, it always, 
it still weighs on me that sure. that I hadn't checked in after Charlotte, like moving back here from Charlotte. Like, hey man, I love you guys. Like, wh- how are you guys doing? Yeah, you know, it's like a it's like a you're you're hurting yourself to a certain extent by not doing by not reaching it. out yeah. and um. It's it's on my to do list that I keep pushing off it to send something to Jesse to say I <laughs> I need to stop by your dad's where your dad's buried to like yeah say thanks to make my peace mm-hmm. and <laughs> I'm feeling a lot more emotional about that right now than I did do about my my mom's passing right because he was a he was a good person the stuff that he i you know i don't know what after we went our separate ways in life after high school and, and early college years uh, you know i don't know the kind of man and father that he ended up being but to me he was he was a good man mm-hmm. um that's the memory that i hold and i, I have that thing that i need to check off and the, fuck, see, so the last couple of weeks I keep saying, the last couple of weeks I've added make that call. For me, I need to make that call because uh, he was a good man and I didn't get an opportunity yeah. to say thanks. Yeah. Uh, and for, I think, I think I have a lot of those. Mm-hmm. I think I have a lot of those. Uh. There's like a running joke, I think, in my house. Like, oh, man, my dad's coming down, and sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a bothersome thing because I'm in the middle of work or I'm trying to get yard work done or something like that. But in the end, I will always be thankful for that opportunity when my dad stops by and I get an opportunity to tell him that I love him right. and, and thank you. Because, man... You I you don't know. Yeah. You, you don't know. Um Yeah, I mean if I, I you know, I don't think that there was anything that I was gonna do about this situation. No. And but, I think that's important. But right? I think also injecting myself more you know, having the wherewithal to inject myself into his life more. I don't know. It's all it's all hype it's yeah. hindsight, right? Yeah. Hindsight. Uh but yeah, you're not you don't know. I mean, he shut people out. It's not like right. I was going to do anything. Like, his Eric couldn't do anything, you know? Right. And he didn't have any real support. Like, his mom's not here. Uh, his wife is out of the picture for a terrible reason. Mm-hmm. He's taking care of this his son on his own. And he's not working. Like, everything's bad, right? I mean, right. the whole situation is, like, fucked up for him. And... So he just decided, I'm going to self-medicate, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that, yeah. I struggle with that because I don't understand addiction. Like I, like yeah. grappling with how people get into that whole cycle, right. I really struggle with, uh, cause I don't have, like, I don't drink right. hardly ever. Uh, I have never smoked weed. Right. I wouldn't touch any sort of hard narcotic, narcotic, cocaine, blah blah blah. I mean, meth, anything. Not a fan of needles, huh, buddy? No, I don't want to cook shit on a spoon. <laughs> you know, but I, I just don't understand the. Uh, there's no allure to it. I, I just see <laughs> nothing but trouble. Yeah, I just see a lot of bad. You only hear about bad stuff. You don't. You never hear the story that go where the guy goes, "Oh, I started taking meth and my life turned around, and now yeah. I'm a successful billionaire." Yeah. That doesn't happen. I only do coke on Thursdays, yeah. and I'm fucking successful as hell. I have filled up my trunk full of alcohol and decided to drink it all over the weekend. Yeah, and now I'm uh, the CEO of a company. Right, that doesn't happen. Like you're just not. It doesn't. There, never is there a good thing that comes out of doing those things. And so I just really struggle with the how people get. In. I know it's a thing, right? Right. I understand that's it's a thing. I just don't understand. Right. How people get like 
turn and there into are, it. There are all, and, and, oh, there it is. You've got battery phobia. Nope, nope. Higher. There it goes. It's always a, uh, I, and it's uh, addiction is, there's no way. Like, yeah. We could, I mean, you have genetic predisposition. You have, yeah. you know, trauma. Right. Uh, you know, you know. Uh, 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 Self-soothing stuff, right? You know, yeah. Uh, oh, that just feels so good when I don't have right. to think and about I'm it. Right, and I'm in control, so I'm good. Uh, you know, but you're not. But you're not. You're not. You're not. I mean, because I, I, you know, drinking even like I. This is part of the part of the my past with Scott was that I was we were like in the same sort of like musical genre, which was, and I've talked about this in shows past, uh, which is like straight edge kind of punk rock, but he was way more liberal in that regard than I was. Mm -hmm. Uh, he would go to parties and drink and I would always be the designated. He wanted to drink. I didn't care. I didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I would always be the designated driver. Maybe that's where it started. And that's right. Terrible. Right. Right. Um, but, for me, like that was like I just I'm not into it. So this this genre of music, the straight edge positive stuff, was sort of my bag. I wasn't into the thing that a lot of my friends ended up being into, mm -hmm. which was drinking and then ultimately other stuff, mm -hmm. which got them in a lot of trouble. Right. Yeah. And so I. Man, I just struggle with that that aspect of it um, to the point to that you just are killing yourself. You literally kill yourself. I mean, uh, Eric made mention to the to the effect that they said that his he was forty eight, and they said that his body was that of a seventy year old from yeah. drinking. Yeah, and it's just like My, fucking thirty years. It, it did the same same thing to. To my mother, yeah, alcohol. She alcoholism absolutely destroyed her. The one of the times that we had managed to see her when she had come back to the area, and she had essentially killed her liver, yeah, th through alcohol. Was told, nah. and to see her juxtaposed next to my dad of the same age. What you would think she was a grandparent, mm -hmm. like I, uh, yeah. my dad isn't, you know, uh, oh god, Ant Man. I'm thinking of Ant Man, the guy that plays Ant Man. Oh, um, that uh, looks looks forty, and he's pressing sixty or something. Yeah, I can't. You think know, of one him. of those. Yes. My dad looks very good for his age. Paul Rudd. Yeah, Paul Rudd. Hashtag, you no, know, can't correct me if I if we figure it out in the same show. <laughs> ha ha. Gotcha. And gotcha, bitches. Uh, my dad looks good for his age. He's a grandparent. Uh, my mom, 10, 15 years ago, in that moment, looked 20 years older than my dad yeah. by far. It, it absolutely destroyed her and her body. Yeah. And the science that somehow allowed her another two to three years to continue to kill her body once she got out of the hospital. Like, well, that's science for you. I yeah. mean, okay. But, you know, I'll, I'll, I mean, absolutely just destroyed herself. I mean, there was a thing that came out, I want to say a year or so ago, they were talking about, like every hot dog you eat takes a year off your life no, or some really? shit. And I'm like, Holy oh, that's, shit. that's that's fucking bullshit, first of all. But when it comes to smoking, drinking, drugs, it literally is the case. You, you know what I mean? I, yeah. Literally, it is the case. Yeah. Yeah. But I wanted to say, man, thank you to uh, Eric for letting me know. And, and in such a personal way... Um, yeah. That was, he didn't have to do that. He could have just said. He passed. Blah, blah, blah. He passed or whatever. And uh, 
So I hope to hook up with him at some point here in the near future. Did he go to the show by chance? <laughs> he or didn't know that because he didn't know. Oh, oh. And he's like, oh, shit, I would have gone and seen him. I'm like, well, now I know. You now know? you know. Yeah. Right. Here's your course correction. Yeah. Uh, it's it's up to you to make the call. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he's uh, he, he there, we're, he's in an interesting uh, situation because he was saying that his mom doesn't want to have anything to do with a memorial. As far as she's concerned, he's buried out in the East Coast or whatever. Oh, okay. And her ties to this area are no yeah. more. Mm. And so this is where Scott grew up and like made a lot of friends mm -hmm. before moving to the East Coast. And so Eric wants to do some kind of memorial. Mm. And he was kind of waiting on his mom to... Green light it or bless it? Or, or help or, or oh, something. Okay. Um, and I'm just like, <clears throat> I don't think that she cares. Like, you just have to, like, plant your flag and say, this, this is, is what we're doing. This is for our, our people. Yeah, we're going to go to a park. We're going to go to a show. We're going to go to a whatever. Hmm. And we're going to do a thing and... and Make your pieces. Yeah, and if you need some help, let me know. Kind yeah. of thing. I, I don't know. I don't know how to do that, but I will do what I can, you know. Mm. But, uh, yeah. So just really shitty way to find out mm. that, you know, a guy that, like, I think about him all the time. Even before last week, I think about him all the time. I just, you know, not that I was messaging him, mm. but I'm sending, I don't even, where did the text go? Did somebody that. Pick up his phone? Number like has you know a yeah cell are they just role? like what the fuck yeah this hey, is a man second message from this number uh, I don't know who you are yeah I'm thinking about sending a message and being like hey um sorry about that this was an old friend's number and I just learned he passed away so yeah. you won't get any more yeah not for me yeah <sighs> huh yeah what a mind fuck uh, and I'm you know I was kind of struggling with it a little bit just because it's someone who I would consider to be. A close, f close friend. Yeah. You know, just, and someone I've known for a long time. Um, yeah. I mean, I think about like the just number of sleepovers we had, swimming, fishing, mm -hmm. skating, skating. I got pictures of him skating empty swimming pools that I, cause I was on track to be a photographer. Mm -hmm. So I shot everything in high school and I got pictures of him skating empty swimming pools and all, you know, all kinds of stuff. Mm. And, uh, man, it just, it, um, heart's broken. Hmm. So anyway, sad, my, that's my sad story. Much sad. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, in the, in that vein, uh, I, I had something that, that I was going to point out that it sort of ties into that, and that was, you know, the last couple of weeks, we've had a couple, like, meet-and-greet ingress things where we pulled in people physically to do a thing. Yeah. And what I, uh, what I didn't realize I had been missing was actual, was Donna. Uh. Uh, and this, this may be weird. But Donna, <laughs> Donna grounds me to the country mm -hmm. and that I didn't necessarily realize have like I, I'm I'm a country guy, foothills, yeah. like the red dirt. Right. And then when I have these conversations with my dad, you know, we're talking about work parties for the bridge and, you know, potholes in the gravel road and an NID party to clean shrubs from the line and and all those things. Uh, but a lot of those are just conversations with my dad. And it's like, uh, it, it, you know, it's like automatic. But Donna, Donna is um, someone that like blends that space between us being nerds and playing the game and being uh, country. Right. <laughs> like, no, knows dirt road life. Oh, yeah. Knows, uh, knows the foothills like I do. Yeah. Knows uh, what it's like to commute a long-ass fucking way for the most basic of shit. 
Well, and is a whole nerd herself. And is a whole nerd oh, herself. Oh, like, like, uh, like, like engineering wise and all know, that stuff. The last and it's the last couple times that she's come down. Like it, it has, like there's the part of me that is sad that she's schlepping that distance, and then for the small amount of conversations that we're actually having. I am less inclined to be paying attention to what we're there, what we're gaming on, and listening to her in the two to five minutes talk about how her fucking Subaru is finally fixed, <laughs> or the the you know emissions bullshit in the truck is cleared, and now she's got to put miles on it, like or that she can't it, get up her own road to her house, <laughs> right? You know, the snow or her roof's finally getting fixed, or something, you know. Hashtag hey Donna, uh, you know, uh, she's my people. Yeah, uh, and we ha- everyone that comes to those things are my people, but she grounds me in a way. She bridges that gap. Yeah, that is like, uh, it, 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 we're all my peoples, but she's a unique kind of peoples because she she's still country, right. And and the conversations that that we have are almost so unique in a way that uh, not everyone will uh, they can listen and they may under like hear it, but they don't understand it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, I I missed that. Like uh, how important that was to making sure that uh, the tone of text messaging or discords or Slack or an email is not enough. It does not bridge. It does not match. It doesn't bridge. It doesn't match the experience of that that in person, hey, how you doing? Yeah. Like, how's it going? Absolutely. You know, she's not my age, so it's not that, like, we can talk about high sc- being in high school together. Right. Right? Um, it's the country part that we have both, like, it's the, it's the tie that binds. Um, Mike and I have a similar, similar thing, like the country, same space, same, you know, um, passions in, in, in cars and automotive, you know, shenanigans, um, and the same age bracket. Uh, A lot of a similar um, economic struggles. Like, we share a lot of that stuff, and that's what makes uh, us unique. But the the thing with Donna, it it had hit me after just two weeks of of having a a once-a-week thing. I'm like, Donna is... Donna's my person. Yeah. Donna's like a, she's like a little hit of being into the country without having to go all the way up there. And unfortunately, that means she comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I just wanted to make sure that, so if Donna, if you hear this, uh, thank you. And, and man, you're good peoples. I love yous. Yeah. You're good I agree stuff. with that. Yeah. Um, Continuing to positive turn it. We, um, Mike, hashtag hey zombie. Uh, Monday was holiday, so we had it off. And I think <laughs> s- Mike had it off. Man, well, there was offings. Well, he was already off. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, Mike. Wow, struggle, <laughs> huh? He's like, fuck, I, I'm really waiting for that three day weekend. Um, I can't remember. They. Stopped by for something on Sunday. Fuck, I'm totally drawing a blank. Yeah. Oh, was it? It was the the build. Yeah. The the build. Mm-hmm. So we rode over and then rode back and like we were just shooting the shit in the garage for a little bit. And Mike was talking about, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the bike out and I'm gonna ride up and go get that thing, like just for fucks fucks and giggles. And so like, I could ride the bike. Yeah. And I went, oh, so you feel good? And right on. He's like, what are you doing tomorrow? And I went, well, I mean, I've, I've got my, I have dad shit. I have the... <laughs> Wait, like, where's the list? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, I'll go get the fucking list. Hashtag sad dad. Yeah. Uh, 
And he's like, let's go. Like, and I went, well, I got, you know, I threw away my helmet because one, it, it had aged out and it was actually falling apart. So it wouldn't have been. It expired like yeah. a can of beans. You really don't want to be, they expire. Um, so I chucked it and that was part of my like, well, I can't ride because I don't have a helmet. And Angie goes, you wear my helmet if it fits. It rides, pretty much. And I mm-hmm. went, yeah, uh, okay, all right, fine. You know, bottom line is I had a shitload of stuff to do that I was going to do. And I'm like, um, I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to do that. Yeah. So I said, 10 o'clock. I'll be there at 10 o'clock. Uh, but I got to ride Angie's bike, um, the 250 or, but really, or. <laughs> <laughs> And we we wrote. Uh, listen, I uh, when it comes to motorcycles, I'm rough on the edges. Still, yeah. Like uh, I haven't ridden in a long, 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 long time. The last time I rode a bike was hashtag Hey Sarah Sarah's bike, and it was just like a knock the cobwebs loose right around the uh, you know Garden Highway, right around Mike and Angie's place. Mm-hmm. So it's been a while. So you're a little tentative. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And rightly so. You're, you're fully exposed yeah. on a motorcycle. You don't have a cage. Um, I never, even in my peak skill set on my motorcycle, I never rode my motorcycle as hard as I drove Grimlock or the ghost. Mm-hmm. Never did. Uh, I, the time wasn't there. But I, I pushed it. That skill set has waned. Absolutely, 100% honest with myself. And I've always been honest with Mike about it. And Mike respects that because he knows he can't. Well, it, the last thing he wants you to do is right. lay so, down a bike or there, hurt yourself. There is a very much understanding. Like, there's no, he knows, and I'm honest with him. So he knows I know, and I know that he knows. Yeah. To, to push it on bikes with me is only a recipe for bad news i can only do 70 right and her bike could probably barely do that consist- oh really or, or i would be constantly i'd probably get a wrist cramp because you got one more gear you, it needs one more piston oh god yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine yeah it's an absolutely amazing bike as a beginner or a cobweb knocker outer it's yeah. it it's a. Uh, I have no complaints about the bike given my current skill set much harder to get yourself in trouble right Absolutely. Yeah. Abs- yes. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect picture of that. So I get there. Uh, her helmet was tight, but acceptable within margins. <laughs> My brain. Yeah. There was some squishing. My ears. But it, she had the uh, Senna system, which is kind of like a, a walkie-talkie Bluetooth intercom system between oh, cool. the two, two of us. Yeah. Um, I never rode with anybody, really. Yeah. When I was riding, I rode a couple times with Grant, but that was really before the advent of serious tech. Before other pistons? Pairing. Yeah. Well, I had the pistons then, but <laughs> now I, I do not. Um, so it, it fit tight, but it was within margins, and it wasn't dangerous to be wearing, and it didn't cause me cramps or anything. Plus, it had the intercom. So we set off. Um, we went back. Through some back roads and urban shit and stoplights and whatnot to like get me used to. We got gas and then we headed up the road. Uh, I would like to point out that the road system that goes between where they're at and where we were going was it's farmland and it was nice. It was well maintained roads. Hmm. We b- both Mike and I were pleasantly surprised. Hmm. So. I was, it takes that thing off the, the radar as far as things having to deal with when you're knocking your cobwebs loose. It was like, do I have to worry about... Unsettled fucking, tire. Right. It, you know, the potholes or shitty gravel on the road or, yeah. you know, uh, the road was really nice. Um, we got to where we were going. We did some portal shenanigans and uh, we, we took a break for, you know, a couple minutes. Uh, bike started. Got some water, but then we got back on our way. We were on our way back when we got an alternative shenanigans. So we decided to continue our shenaniganing <laughs> a little bit higher up outside Yuba City. Yeah. Uh, where that was, there was shade. So we parked and took a longer break. Than Did you we- eat a sandwich and stuff? Uh, we <laughs> we could have. We took a long enough break that we pro- probably could have. Yeah. Um. 
uh, but because there was shade, and the first place that we stopped, there wasn't, um, and we kept our, our armor on, we took an opportunity in the shade at our second stop to take off our jackets, you know, cool down a bit, get the water, shoot the shit. Farm some keys, bitches. There you go. And, oh, 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 oh. Well, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah, I have like one key. Anyway, and we were there for 10 minutes or 15. We went to get, you know, packed up, pack up, get back on the bikes. Her bike, um, hashtag hey dragon. Uh, dragon seems to sometimes not be mindful about her battery or starting it when she knows she should. Oh, oh yeah, calling you out. So, but not to entirely. Her, her thing. The battery was was old, right? Yeah. So it needed to be swapped out. So, <clears throat> so it's basically uh, failed. And, it, and, it's, <clears throat> and it's, I'll say it's probably our fault too for taking too long of a break knowing her battery in her bike died. Hmm. So we are above Yuba City. Do you use a bike to jump a bike? Can you do that? Oh, to like, well, we didn't have any tow shit. Anyway, oh, like you talk jumper cables? Yeah. We didn't have anything like that anyway. <laughs> Wait, Mike just bought a jumper pack. He didn't take that with him? Right. <laughs> Hindsight. <laughs> Hindsight. Nice. Uh, no. The okay. answer is no, we right. didn't. So uh, we've, like, in the span of, like, a minute and a half, it's like, well, okay, this bike's dead, and we're looking around. I'm like, well, at least our shade. I mean, if anything has to happen, it's Mike. Like, if we can't get it started, Mike gets on his bike, and really, he could probably scoot to somewhere and get a battery or a charger or cables or something, and then scoot back, and, you know, I'm fine with sitting there. Yeah. But it's a, it's a motorcycle. It's, a, it's manual. It can be pop-started. Sure, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Mike and his knee. Oh, man. Right? Yeah. Mike. So, the, the obvious call here is... Mike has to be the one to push to on the oh, bike. Oh, on the bike. On the bike yeah, because yeah, yeah. Mike can't push. Right. So <clears throat> <laughs> we are above Yuba City. BFE. Yeah. And here is two dudes <laughs> push starting a bike of a uh, small size with a very large dude on it. <laughs> and I am pushing Mike. To get him to pop start on the second second go, yeah. it, it does pop start, and then it was, well, that just happened. It's another one of those like, yep. <clears throat> man, this is. <laughs> I mean, it could just be ingress. You could just be going and killing a thing and swap flipping a portal and farming keys, and you're like, yeah, we did an ingress thing and we drove way out here. Yeah, but it was the icing on the typical ingress icing on the cake for what seems to be our group, and particularly Mike and I, is there's, there's always a fucking story. Right. There's always a funny story. Yeah. Uh, and this was it. We get to a place, a bike dies, and uh, he, here we are. It's two Large dude, guy on a small bike large, getting pushed yeah, by yeah. another guy. Six foot plus <laughs> and a five foot not quite enough. <laughs> And motorcycle gear, full kitted, and we, um, here we are, gravel, and and you know, it all worked out, and we didn't stop for food or anything, we just kind of... Because you didn't want to have to do that again. Right, no one wants to do that shit again, and and, and if we were to stop in Yuba City, that would probably be even funnier, because you'd see me pushing his ass down Main Street, (laughs) you know, and uh, good times. That's it, funny. It was good times. That's and funny. And then rode back, came back 99, had the thing pegged as hard as I could, you know. It, I think 75 was about with my body size where that thing tops out. But I tell you, nothing checks you faster than being on a motorcycle and getting a crosswind. You know, boy, if you've, if you've been missing out on doing any core exercises, mm. That learned that. that learns you real quick. We were coming through, god damn it, sh- like some stuff the where the train tra- uh, Sheridan, okay, where the train comes through and there's like a sweeping turn if you're going up towards Yuba City, yeah. Right in that space, 
in some of those like long turns where you're you're kind of well for me you're kind of in like a little bit of like a off center gravity of the bike slight lean like because you're in a turn ish mm-hmm. and you get a wind that's coming that's blowing you towards the way you're leaning yeah yeah it, uh whoo pucker and i think well today's wednesday yesterday my my core let me know like boy you you tightened up there buddy and uh you hadn't done that in a long time pal hey how's that going <laughs> uh the, the inside of my like my groin the inside of my my legs yeah from like squeezing on the bike and like some of the some of the moves and like just having a grip on the on the tank as i would let <laughs> let my arms loose and like you know relax a little bit yeah my my inner thighs are like hey <laughs> how how you been I'm gonna, I haven't seen you in a while. I'm going to let you know we're still here. <laughs> and uh, you either need to be doing that more or remember this moment. Right. Punk ass. Uh, we got back. I had uh, dropped off. You know, I had a little bit more drink a glass of water with Dragon and Mike. And I, I wish I had more time. Uh, it, is a, it is a different experience. Then and we had this talk like as we were writing the the manual analog experience of riding a motorcycle it doesn't have to be hard um, is a different driving enthusiast experience than a car uh, not to not um wave off the skill set needed in knowing how your vehicle works and its limits along with your limits it is um y- uniquely difficult and a completely different learning curve but also an enthusiasm in riding a motorcycle right like, um we were talking about some of the data that he gets fed from his his BMW uh, that it tracks on his ride. And we were talking about how um as a car your car is doing all of that data logging too. But when you want to like if we were to do the uh the Gray Eagle sprint again. Mm-hmm. If you wanted or we were to make that a repeat thing, if you wanted to increase uh, how you wanted to approach it. Like you, I, I would like to do it a little bit faster or I would not necessarily like to get there faster, but take turns more aggressively. The skill and input that you would need from the car or yourself is less, you need less feedback than a motorcycle. Like, where was my lean angle? Where how how long did I break before I accelerated out? Did I slow accelerate out when I could have you know accelerated in a different way or could I have shorter braked and rode the accelerate like there Does are, it give him G force ratings and yes, all kinds of, Oh wow. Yes. <clears throat> absolutely. A hashtag fucking ABMW it's amazing. Like they did it right, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I uh, semi chubbed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> was that while you're pushing? Well, it? Like he's like he's the... he's showing me like as it it is like watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To step away. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, did it start? Oh, yeah. sure it did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you go back inside. <laughs> um. The uh, to rewatch it reminded me a lot of like if you ever watched the uh, God I don't remember the name of the driver that did the TT course with a Subaru and he's got it's got the overlay of like his G force as accelerating brake so he's doing you know a STI WRX kind of thing but yeah. he's doing the Isle of Man TT course and so you see all of the stuff the his Mike's BMW tracks like that same kind of shit like at and then you see it on like a you know a map overlay like a google maps overlay 
and as you hit play, and you it like replays oh, wow. G-force, lean angle, accelerator, braking, engine RPM, like phenomenal amount of data. And that kind of information is what you need as a motorcycle rider if you want to increase your skill set. And it is um, bars above useful than that would be to a person in a car at, at our level. Right. Like, uh, okay, I'm just going to start stabbing it harder yeah. and break a little quicker right. and watch my shifts. And I'm I'm fucking gonna go. Yeah. Like here we here we go. That type of okay, I'm almost gonna say willy nilliness does not directly translate to a motorcycle. Like you need the well, I can't brake and accelerate faster if I'm not also leaning. You know that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And to have that in his bike, giving it to you. Uh, major props. Like uh, anyone who's a motorcycle enthusiast, um, boy, and you're looking for some of those hyper naked or R double R style bikes. Fucking BMW, man. Uh, save your pennies and get one of those because mm. I don't know who else is doing that. But having seen Mike's firsthand, that's the that's the shit. Like, uh, super impressed. Hmm. Super impressed. That's cool. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, the Garmin watches or the Apple watches that are like your run, like your cadence, uh, you know, your turns, the mileage, the heart rates, all of that stuff his bike gives you as a motorcycle rider. Right. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal experience. Did he actually get up over a thousand miles on it yet? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and his thing too, yeah. right? He he knew when we got back, you know, his knee was getting tired. So uh he knows his limits. Could he have done the whole thing in half the time? Probably. Pro- probably. <laughs> probably. Could I have kept up? Absolutely not. Yeah. Um but in this instance, right, it's the, it's the, we chatted the whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I, I, you know, I wish I could say the clarity in the Senna system was awesome. But the ability to shoot the shit and have a conversation, like we are right now. Yeah. We essentially mm-hmm. had a podcast while writing. Right. It was job. Oh, fucking taxes. Absolutely. And those Floridians and the... (laughs) Well, wait till they start putting building codes in fucking hurricanes. Well, they won't do that fucking shit. Talking about bike specs. Like... Well, yeah. Right, right, right. And he could hear, like, when I fucking would miss it. Oh, and there's... Well, yeah. Uh, When I would peg it, he'd be like, (laughs) wow, I would have stalled it by now. Or, you know, when I'm running it out of gear or too long. Right. Um, I told Venus when we got back, Mike chatters with, on a ride, I don't know if he does it with Angie too, uh, chatters how exactly uh, a, a gearhead data guy like me wants to hear, like, uh, uh, eighth of a mile, stop sign, and then we're turning right. Oh, yeah, okay. And then we're shooting the shit in between. So, okay, so uh, two car... Uh, your blinker's still on, Foo. <laughs> okay, fuck, sorry. Like, my thumb, my glove wasn't quite broken in. Yeah. And so when I thought I was hitting it, it was my glove was, like, stiff enough that what I thought I was pressing, I you wasn't. Yeah. So it, 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 it's on me. He, and he correct... You know, like, blinker's still on. Fuck! God damn it! <laughs> I mean, it happened probably, like, five or six times. Yeah. Uh, he... Like navigate datas, like oh we're turning here, we're here, we're here. Uh, okay, are we good to pass here? Absolutely. So, uh, it would be a crazy experience if we were to do like the Gray Eagle thing again, where we all had that kind of mic system, right? Where we could all be just 
chatting and or you shut it off like now nah, uh, this one I'm in the zone and I'm going back to music. Yeah. And or uh, I'll check it with you in like 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, or he like someone does a mic. Or like me. I'm falling behind. I'm back here. I'll catch up. Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. The being able to shoot the shit and talk and communicate while you're writing. Uh, that was a, a, a great experience. And Mike does. Foo clerical data, like navigation shit as we're. As we were writing, I'm like, oh yeah, this is the hot stuff right here. Like, I, I like hearing that. Like, oh, because you know, I'm not going to look at my phone. Uh, my cobwebs are not lo- loose enough where right. I'm going to be bothering pulling up navigation on mine. Right. I'm focusing on the bike, focusing on the ride, trying to not do something stupid, and continuing to get my bearings and stay observant. And so his him taking that weight. To have like a navigator and like a direct, like, hey, here, like a shepherd. He's, yeah. You know, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was your navigation. Yeah. They, uh, f- ah, God. Did you ride any wheelies though? No. Oh. No. They're, Dang. no. I mean, I've always seen those guys on Highway 80 when I'm coming home where they're like popping a wheelie in the fast lane coming down from Newcastle, like riding a wheelie for yeah. like a quarter well, I'm mile. sure, I'm sure Mike's could, and he would just probably have to say, please let me wheelie. <laughs> You know, but hashtag not really. But uh, but I don't know. Andy, yeah. Uh, he could no. probably, be, but not me. You wouldn't want to do it on someone else's bike. Well, absolutely. And I don't have that skill set. Yeah. So yeah. It, anymore. And on a 250, one cylinder, it'll probably end badly anyway. One cylinder? Yeah. It's one cylinder. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's funny. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Hmm. Wait, we're at time. Dang. I got to only two of the things. Dang. But we had a good <clears throat> good top of the hour. Uh, I would like to say that your buddy let us know that the show that I couldn't remember in the last show was called Shadow and Bone. Oh, hashtag, hey, Grant, thank you. Yeah. You were the first one Yeah. Yeah. to respond that it was Shadow and Bone. I still don't yeah. know what the fuck that show is. Uh, interesting show. It's sort of like steampunk kind of... Do you know where what platform it was on? Uh, it might be on Netflix. Someone please tell us where the fucking <laughs> show is. <laughs> we'll look it up after we get off the... <laughs> we, we hit stop. Yeah. We'll look it up. We, I, yeah. I think it was on Netflix, but I don't know. I don't remember. It was a while ago. It was probably a year or so ago. Okay. Anyway. And on that note, please return the cart. Yeah, you should wash your hands for sure. Wash your ass. Um, check your oil, Tony. Wear the mask where appropriate. Register to vote. Get the shot. Do the kindness. Make the call. Make the call. And we will catch you next week. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye.